Good morning. Here we are on our first official uh, non-school day of this weird time. Hope everyone's doing okay. We haven't really set much of a timetable. We talked through what we were going to do, but I'm not really going to pressure myself on that really. I've still got a lot of work to do and um, we're just going to take it easy and I, I think we'll fall into some kind of routine or pattern. But it was just to do a first video and it was um, to go through, through some of the list that um, you have in your pack. So I sent a, a pack out to all the children who attend our dyslexic provision in Newcastle. Um, but we also have all of these documents that can be emailed to you and eventually they'll be on the website. Um, my husband does all the website stuff but he's still working so we'll have to see when we can fit that in. I'm quite reliant on him to do that. But we can email them. And this is a list of things that you can do maybe once or twice a week or there are some things that you can do every day that would be really beneficial. And of course it is aimed at dyslexic children but dys dyslexic teaching is really, really just good quality um, repetition that does benefit all children anyway. So I would say, you know, up to the age of seven or eight, this would be still really good. Um, and if children are dyslexic up to the age of 10, 11, some of these things can also still be really good for them. So it covers a broad uh, range. One of the things that you definitely need to make the most of this time is to get children touch typing, particularly dyslexic children, because the effort that it goes into actually form letters and write is unbelievable for a dyslexic child. And touch typing is something they never get to practice. So if you can get them doing that every day for 10 to 15 minutes minimum, four to five times a week, it will make a really big difference. And it'll really make the most of this time, this a huge amount of time that we've got at home. So what I advise is that you go on the BBC Bite Size and there's loads of touch typing activities on there for free. So that's something you can start now every day while you wait for all of my videos to come on. The first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the rainbow arc and I'll do a video tomorrow showing how you actually do the rainbow arc but I just want you to get it set up today. So this is something that I use, you can buy them online for about £3.50 from the dyslexia shop and I think they sell them in packs on Amazon they might be quite expensive but what you could do is just get an A3 piece of paper or two bits of paper sellotaped together and get your child to paint on a rainbow and then on the back you write the alphabet so it doesn't really matter if it's a bought rainbow arc or whether they've made it themselves and if you don't have a lowercase alphabet you can just print off an alphabet um, or even write them on even write them onto pieces of paper and cut them out it's quite straightforward it doesn't all have to be all singing and dancing as long as you've got an alphabet and a rainbow arc and then the other thing you need to do is create an alphabet strip. So we've got all of this stuff, um, it's all available online or we can email you it. This is the best um, alphabet strip that I've found so far and it has um, capitals and it has lowercase. And remember children need to know the sound, so at, but, cut, du, when they're looking at a lowercase letter. They need to know the sound, at, but, cut, du, when they're looking at capital letters. But they also need to know that an A when it's written like that is an A, and an A when it's written like that is an A or an A, or that's a F and an F, or that's a R and an R. And they know how to write the capital and write the lowercase. There's actually eight ways of knowing the alphabet, um, which I'm going to talk about in another video. But the alphabet is actually really more complicated than knowing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. You'll be surprised probably if you start this with your children. So we get the alphabet strip and this is one that I did, I made earlier with my um, five year old. And you colour in the specific letters. So here we've got B and D in different colours, very important with dyslexia children to differentiate the B and the D. The I and the J are circled because when they're lowercase they look very similar and it's a reminder that they go together. And then we have M-N-O-P in the middle, which I always say is M-N-O-P. And the kids really remember that because the M-N-O-P is right at the very, very top of the rainbow. And that's one of the reasons why it's in an arc. And then we've got V and W. Um, and you can do U as well, actually. They're just all kind of very similar looking letters. 
that go together. So you can tell the children have got points in the alphabet to help them. The B and the D, the I and the J, MNOP and the UVW or the VW. And that will help them start structuring the alphabet. So what I would suggest you do is get your alphabet strip, get it coloured in, get a rainbow arc sorted with an alphabet on the back and get yourself some letters, whether they be magnetic, plastic, or you make some out of paper, but make them lowercase for now. So lowercase are um, the small letters, not the capitals. Okay, so the next video will be showing you how to do the rainbow because some children, even the ones that have been doing it with me at the center, they will cheat. So you have to watch them because in their heads they're going, ABC. And the whole idea is that they're just picking up the mm and they know where to put it. They pick up the but and they know where to put it. They're not running through the alphabet in their heads. If they are doing that, they need to start on this side. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. Take it easy. Don't, you know, don't try and do everything in one day. You're going to run out of things to do and smaller amounts daily consistently regular high quality is what we're going to aim for okay it's not long till bedtime bye